What's up guys, welcome to the video. As you can see by the thumbnail, I used to be a bit of a chubster. So I'm going to take you through my 65 pound weight loss, how I did it step by step. So if you're looking to look, feel and perform better, this is the video for you. The first thing that we're going to cover is nutrition because nutrition is by far the most powerful tool in your toolkit when it comes to fat loss. Reason being is we have to be in a calorie deficit in order to create fat loss. And nutrition is by far and away the easiest way to create a calorie deficit. Meaning you have to expend more energy than you take in in order for fat loss to occur. It's identical to your budget. The best way to go about that is to favor single ingredient whole foods such as lean meats, fish, eggs, dairy if you tolerate it well, fruit, veggies, starchy carbohydrates like sweet potatoes, potatoes and rice, etc. The reason we want to make these foods the majority of our diet is because they're far more filling per unit calorie than highly processed foods. For example, if you were to eat 2000 calories worth of donuts or 2000 calories worth of single ingredient whole foods, which one is going to keep you more full? By far, the single ingredient whole foods are going to set you up for success because hunger is not sustainable and hunger is what has us fall off track, right? So we want to set ourselves up for success by choosing foods that are lower in calories but keep us nice and full. As far as specific calories and macros go, a safe bet is to go with one of protein per pound of body weight and then to fill in the remainder of your calories with carbohydrates and fats based on your personal preferences. Personally, I eat about 1.25 to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight, but that's just because I like the taste of protein. As far as tracking calories and macros go, I use my fitness pal because I like the usability of it, but you can use any app you want. Just make sure that you stay consistent with it. So now that we've addressed the input part of the equation, the nutrition, let's address the output. So workouts and steps. The first thing that I did was actually prioritize steps, which might surprise you. I hit 10,000 steps or more every single day. And the reason that I focused on steps is because walking actually burns more calories than your workouts. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? A workout might burn two to 300 calories-ish, but a long walk or hitting 10K steps per day will burn more than that. I still included weight training three to four days per week in my routine because I like the way that I look with a little bit of muscle mass on my body, but I don't actually really factor in or focus on how many calories my workouts are burning. My mindset around workouts is that those are in place to build muscle and look the way that I want to look visually from a muscle mass standpoint, but not to burn calories per se. Now, how should you track your steps? I would recommend getting something like a Fitbit. Personally, I used an Apple Watch, which I no longer use. I use my phone now, but I'm still sure to hit 10K steps at an absolute minimum on my phone and I do get more than that because I don't have my phone on me all the time, but I just look at that overflow like bonus. The cool thing about step counters, even your phone is that they're super accurate these days and you can look at your weekly averages. So if you do fall short on any specific day, just make sure that you make it up on another day. As far as my specific workouts go right now, I do an upper lower split. So I go upper lower day off, upper lower weekends off. And then every fourth week I deload, let my body rest a little bit. I'll only train a couple of times, so two times, and then I get back into that routine again. So it's three weeks on, one week deload, three weeks on repeat. A few quick tips to boost your step counts because time is a factor, right? I really like the simple little rule of every time that I am on my phone, I am either standing or pacing around. So whether that be scrolling Instagram or talking to a friend, pace around your place. It may seem small, but those little steps, those little chunks add up to a lot come days end, weeks end, months end. Another quick little tip is to do things like take the stairs, park a little further away at the grocery store, or even walk to the grocery store or coffee shop if you are able, depending on your location. Also, if you're meeting a friend for coffee, instead of sitting in the shop, go for a little stroll. Our next pillar is sleep. And while sleep itself does not burn additional body fat, meaning if you sleep eight hours, you're not burning more fat than if you were sleeping seven hours. However, getting great sleep sets us up for success. And so when we're sleeping well, we're more likely to follow our nutrition program, i.e. calorie deficit, as well as get our movement in. The research is super clear that when we're underslept, we actually eat at least an additional 300 plus calories per day. And there goes your calorie deficit, right? Essentially not getting the sleep that you need is like playing basketball with one hand behind your back. You are not doing yourself any favors. Out here at Staples. 
Oh, playing. So be sure to get your seven to nine hours per night based on what you need as far as waking up feeling rested and alert all day long. Now, if you don't have blackout blinds, I would recommend using something like a sleep mask. And if noise is a factor, earplugs are amazing for sleep quality. Another factor that can impair sleep quality is actually eating too much or too close to bed because your body is still digesting food and therefore folks wake up with the night sweats quite often. So I like to give myself at least two to three hours pre-bed to digest all the food that I've eaten and that leads to better sleep quality. The fourth foundational fat loss principle is stress management. Now, fortunately, if you button up the nutrition movement and sleep piece, you most likely won't have to do a ton on the stress management front. Now, personally, I implement 10 minutes of meditation each day, nothing crazy, as well as journaling each morning. As far as my meditation goes, it's nothing fancy. I just do some deep belly breathing. And then in regards to my journaling, I do a grateful log. Now walking is an amazing stress reliever as well, but we've already got that covered because you're hitting your 10K steps, right? I also find listening to music to be really, really stress reducing and you pair that up with a walk, killer combo. Now I didn't just snap my fingers and start doing all four of these things all at once, right? It can take some time to implement. So where would I recommend starting? Without a doubt, start with nutrition. Secondly, the movement piece, chances are when you dial those two in, you're gonna start sleeping a lot better and there shouldn't be much need for stress management strategies. But life happens, you know, things pop up. Now it's worth mentioning that there are no shortcuts to anywhere worth going. So implement these four pillars and I promise you, if you stay consistent, you will get the results that you're after. There's nothing inherently special about me and I achieve these results, so that means that you can too. Speaking of results, if you're interested in what I'm eating on a daily basis right now, check out the video on the next screen.